So even when people Google your name and they see like two or three different accounts, they will see the one that is more active and then they will know that that's you. Does that make sense? What, what, what is worrying for me is that I've used the same Google um, Gmail account. Let's take this now... offline. Let's take this offline so that we don't derail the class. But yes, it's, yes, sure, sure. No it's problem. an issue that, yeah, it's a problem, nice, nice solve it, but don't worry. That's a small issue. We'll, we'll resolve that. All right. So now that we've seen that, I mean, the whole essence of this exercise was for us to see that your personal brand is what people perceive. It has nothing to do with you. It's what they perceive. So that even when you're communicating what your personal brand is, in different ways so you are being careful with the medium the um the 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 one the platform and then the words or whatever it is that you use to communicate your personal brand you are being careful about your content you're being careful about the platforms you're being careful about the associations that you make right? It's important. We all know that perception is everything. So when it comes to personal branding, I always tell people, who do you, there's who you are, and then there's who you want to be. At every point in time, you're always communicating who you want to be on your digital platforms. It's important, right? All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the work, which is the building part. Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't see a lot of excitement in the yes. chat. Are yeah, you ready? yeah, ready? yeah, we're ready. <laughs> yep, good. All right. Okay, dear screen. All right, so building your personal brand is a six step process. And for me, the step pro first process is B. So what I've done is to use the acronym BUILDER um, and I'll tell you why I'm using that acronym, but let's start with the beginning, which is beginning, beginning with the end in mind. I, I think it's Stephen Covey that talked about, is it Stephen Covey? Yeah, seven habits of highly effective people. And this is one of the habits, begin with the end in mind, right? Define your long-term personal branding goals and what you want to be known for. But you know, this is English that I've just put there. When I say begin with the end in mind, and for me, because personal branding is a journey, it's not a destination. So it's a journey of a lifetime. When I say begin with the end in mind, what I mean and what I want us to do is this. Imagine, and this is not to scare anyone, but just imagine for a second that you were a visitor at your own funeral. Yes, God forbid. I know we're all African women. I'm going to live long. Yes, you're going to live long. Yes, you are not dying anytime soon. Yes, you will see your children's children. Yes. Mm -hmm. But whenever that will be, 100 years from now, 50 years from now, whatever it's going to be, the question is death is one, is something that is inevitable. So when death comes knocking and you are, let's just imagine that, right, you are privileged to be a visitor, a participant at your own funeral, and they're reading your eulogy about you, what would you like people to say about you? What would you like to be said about you? For me, that is the end that you need to begin with. Because irrespective of whatever personal plan that we've had in the past, this is a point where we begin to build and we begin to shape and we begin to control. Don't forget, I said that Personal brand building is about perception. So what it is that we are doing now is how do you control what people perceive about you? So I ask the question again, begin with the end in mind. What would you want people to say about you at your funeral? Because everything else that you do, everything else that you're going to start, everything that you're going to stop, and everything that you're going to continue will be based on this premise. Also, yes, we're having this board readiness program to provide you with um, you know, your first step into board roles. Fantastic. To what extent? It's not just getting the board roles. What do you want to get the board roles for? What do you want to use the board roles for? Because there's just one end, 
And that's the final end. We need to start from there to say, what would you want to be known for? And then we begin to plan for it. So the question is, you know, so like for instance, I always use this analogy of someone who wants to go for a vacation. The first thing you always want to define is where do I want to go to? And then you look at it, oh, what's my budget, right? So that's it. Oh, how much do I have? If you know what's your budget, how much do I have? And what means do I have? To, to go for this vacation. So the first thing you're just saying, where, do, where what's the end point for me as an individual? And where am I at this point in time? And what do I need to do to bridge that gap? No matter how long, no matter how short, you need to bridge the gap, right? And what that does, what that exercise, and it's something I really encourage everyone to try to do at some point in your life. And short, no, for you to build a personal brand, you need to start with that exercise. Because then you are then deliberate. And what that exercise does help to, to do, it helps you to count your days. It helps you to maximize your time, knowing that there is a stop, which is death. And yes, it will, it will take a while. It won't come anytime soon, right? At least for, not for the next 50 years. But hey, 50 years might look like a long time. But we know people who don't even live up to 50 years. I know so many, right? So... The question is, what's the end point? And then what, when you have an understanding of what the end point is for you, you then begin to build right now to say, this is how I want to be perceived. This is how I want to be known. This is who I want to be known for. All right. And the next is you understand your why. But before you even understand your why, the first thing you need to articulate your why. Why is it important for you to be known in a certain way? So one of the things I want to do, I mean, one thing I just always say clearly is that, you know, but before I die, I want to directly empower 1 million people to be able to say, oh, I've been able to help 1 million people and to improve economic outcomes for them, to help them to maximize their potential. That for me is the end game. That's what I want to achieve. But the question is why? Why am I doing this? You need to be able to articulate your why. And my why is because, I mean, we had such very interesting, I had a, such a very interesting time growing up. I knew firsthand what poverty was like, right? And I also know the long lasting impact of poverty on an individual's mindset and an, on an individual's ability to grow. So because I know that, I want to ensure that no child, no woman, no individual, as long as I'm able to, as long as it lies within my power, goes through that process or goes through that experience of poverty again. And the only way to do that is through, through women. We all know that when it, the, the level of education that children have is directly proportionate to how, how well to do or economic um, capability of the mother. It's the mother that determines a lot of things, not the father. The fathers could be rich, but then it doesn't impact on their children. So the most singular and effective way to end poverty is to empower women. The most singular way to, to bring up children who are responsible, reliant, resilient, is by empowering the women. That is my why. So there's a personal connection to what I am doing and to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if you see any of my expressions, right, empowerment is always at the key. Anything that I'm involved in, you'll see that my vision and my why remains constant. Because yes, I mean, there could be different expressions of me and I'm sure there's so many expressions of me, but in any expression of me that you see, my vision is clear. Improving economic outcomes for people and helping people to maximize their potential with a specific holistic focus on women because of the quantum effect I can have with just one woman. So if I can help one woman, that's one woman can help like millions. And so that's why I'm focused on women, but doesn't necessarily mean if I see a man now, I say I see someone of the male gender that can maximize their potential, I wouldn't do that. So it's important for you to be able to know what the end game is, articulate your why and understand your why. So because this in our help, so what then happens is that your personal brand is not an integral part of you. 
it's not something that you have to think about and say, oh, no, this is my personal brand. No, it's an integral part of you because you've done the work to, um, you know, like legal, when you have legal, uh, legal blocks, you've unbundled all the legal blocks to build your personal brand. And that's why it's always good to start with the foundation of where do you want to be? What is your why? And understanding why your why is such a great driving point. I've communicated my why and why it is such, such, and why it drives me so passionately. So you understanding that and that articulating and understanding this is very po po um, powerful, helping you to clarify your purpose and the values that drive your personal brand. The values are important. The values is, you know, whatever values for me, excellence it's a key value, right? You want any, anything, I mean, what well, that is one thing that stands out, excellence. Oh yes, I had every inclination to cancel the session. I'm not feeling well. I've had to take a lot of meds to ensure that I'm even able to talk, but not under my watch will we have to cancel it, a session just because I'm not feeling well. No, I will still come up. And not only will I come up, I'll also show up strongly. So you need to understand this why, and then the values that drive it. Next is to identify your strength and strengths and patterns. So identifying your strengths is simple. We all senior executives, you understand that. Um, there's something called personal SWOT analysis. You can just do, do some research about it. It's it's a very useful, useful ex, ex, experiment or exercise, apologies. But I think what's important and what I want to also emphasize more in the, on this point is identifying the patterns, patterns within your past, right? I mean, what has influenced some of the things that you've done? And so I'll, I'll give a, a, a bit of story here, right? Let me just give a bit of story. So there was a time when, I think I talked about, yeah, I talked about it when I started, where I, I spoke about how I was the MD of an organization and a, a position a lot of people envied, but I just felt empty. I mean, the money was good, right? But I felt empty. I really, really felt empty. I didn't feel fulfilled. Yes, I was doing work. Yes, I was achieving results. You muted yourself. Apologies for that, right? So yes, I was earning, earning a lot. Yes, I was, I mean, I was, I was doing well by all standards, but the question was, I didn't feel fulfilled. So you need to identify. So the first thing I did was to ask myself, when was the last time I felt fulfilled? When, what, under what circumstances? When was the last time that, you know, I had that sense of what I, I called fulfillment. And I went back to the last time I felt it and I started walking backwards. And really, in all fairness, I realized that this last time, and this is after, after having a 20 year career, you realize that the last time you felt that sense of fulfillment was when I was serving in a charity, right? When I was in school called Isaac, right? And I asked myself, okay, so if this was the last time I really felt that kind of uh, fulfillment, can I recreate it? And that was what one of the things that led to me starting the charity called Powen, right? So you need to identify patterns because really one thing I can tell you for free, it's I've searched it, I've researched it, I've, I've worked with thousands of women, I can tell you that Every experience that you have gone through in your life is not a mistake. It's not an accident. Everything that you have gone through in life is preparing you for that purpose to which you have been called to. And that is why my experience will be different. Priscilla's experience will be different. Miriam's experience will be different. Amanda's experience will be different. We, will, we all will have different experiences. However, Every single thing, and I repeat, there is no mistake. There are no mistakes. Even the things that you think you wish had not happened to you happen deliberately for a purpose. That you, and you will see if you just just do that exercise of taking a look at back at your life, right? You will see that who you have become today have been shaped by so all the experience. Maybe not all, but some of the experiences, both good and bad, that you've had in your past. 
And this thing has shaped you to become who you are. And the experiences that you're going through now, both good and bad, are shaping you and preparing you for who you are to become. So the question is, what are these patterns? Because if you begin to understand them, if you begin to identify them, if you begin to analyze them, you realize that you'll make less mistakes even in the future, right? So it's important that you identify patterns, patterns in your past, patterns in the people around you. What, who are the kind of people that are necessarily attracted or gravitated towards you? What are those patterns that you see? And then the last type of pattern that is also important what is happening in the world, right? And how am I able to connect in such a way that I'm leading in the world that is evolving? We all agree that the world is evolving. Technology is disrupting things in unprecedented ways. Uh, you know, uh, inter-country uh, intra no, inter wars are also emerging in ways that, you know, is scary. But this is what I tell people. There's nothing that is happening You are muted. Apologies. What did you hear last? In this Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get that. Wars, wars across okay. the con different countries. Okay, yeah, fantastic. So there was um, um between countries, but guess what? Yeah, um Russia, I mean <laughs> Israel, Hamas. It's not the first time, right? I mean, people are dying and I'm sad to hear that. But the question is, it's not the first time that we're having such um, such wars. And well, we hope that it's going to be the last, but that would be wishful thinking. So the question is, what are those patterns? What, what are the patterns that you have seen in the past wars? And what opportunities and threats did they create post-war? So you want to study patterns of what is happening, right, in the now to know how you can position yourself. That's important. So you cannot be thinking with a 2020 mindset, right, when, you know, the world has evolved. So what are the patterns that you're seeing in your world? And the question is, how can you position yourself once you've identified your strength but it's not even also identifying your strengths it's also identifying your weaknesses you know i talked about a personal sort analysis that's important please go and google it please try and do one it helps you it's very important um dear screen do not freeze on me right now all right so l is learn and leverage. You know, by the time you've identified your strength, you've done your personal SWOT analysis, you've identified your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and, and the threat, you then see what the gaps are. And the gaps that we're looking at is the gap between where you want to be, the gap between your end game and where you are now. And then you can then ask yourself, what are the learning gaps? How can I leverage the networks that I have? How can I leverage what I have right now to bridge that gap? faster and in, in a more sustainable manner and then d you have to consistently deliver you see yes there's a perception that you need to create but beyond creating that perception you also need to constantly deliver value deliver excellence we are women and we need to constantly deliver value right i don't want to talk about my experience with this but it's there's never been a better time to be a woman, right? There's a lot of clamor and clout for diversity, diversity on board, diversity on leadership roles, diversity. People are looking for women, but then are women delivering excellence consistently? There are a million and one reasons why, yes, because we are women and because we have the burden of care, we saddle with so many responsibilities. There are a million and one reasons why, yes, we may not be able to deliver excel uh, excellently. But yes, guess what? There will always be excuses. But the question is, do we always deliver excellence? So you need to constantly deliver because between, beyond the perception, create the best perceptions, right? 
some people like me will, if I want to make uh, some recruitment decision, I will still always call. Or if I want to uh, invite someone for, in short, let me let me say this, you know, and I think we will take the the current board chairman for the for the board of advisors for Paywen is someone I'd worked with. He's been a mentor to me for I mean since I had the privilege of working with him like many years ago, right? This was in two thousand and six right when he was my boss and when i wanted to invite him to be the board chair of pwed i still called someone who was a senior executive in the organization he was working for to say oh what's this person like yeah i've, all, I've known him all these years though, and he's just such an amazing person but i'm just checking to be sure that he's still such an amazing person because we all know that life does happen right and life does change people and if you've not spoken to someone in 15 almost 20 years you just want to check and so what more when someone is meeting you for the first time, right? They would, beyond what they see online, they would want to make those calls to the people who work with you directly to say, oh, what's this person like? Can you speak to me about this person? And imagine if you've not, in short, imagine if you've been delivering consistently, but just for once, just for once, you know, something happened and you didn't deliver excellently. And as luck will sometimes have it, it's not the person who was a witness to just that one time when you didn't deliver consistently that was called. Because you know, you never get the opportunity to decide who get who would be called to verify or to validate what you have put up online, right? So that's why it's important to deliver consistently. Yes, I know we have a lot of reasons to give excuses, but please ladies, we need to constantly deliver. Even, I mean, no matter what, you just need to always consider deliver, right? And then I added this, right? Because as, as I said earlier, you know, your personal brand is not static. It keeps evolving. It keeps evolving. It keeps changing. So you need to constantly reevaluate and refine your personal brand. You need to periodically assess your personal brand to ensure that it aligns with evolving goals and values and make necessary changes and adjustments to stay authentic and relevant. Let me check the time, I'm, I've really run out of time. So let me talk about the pillars. I'm just going to rush through this. So the first pillar is presence, right? What perception do you give when people meet you online and in person, right? What do people see? And I also want to talk about, you know, something something important you know about presence you see when you when people see you what what do they see what do they what feedback are you giving to people 